In this session we're going to talk about the IQ boiler control by US boiler and we did a last session on status displays on the, on the screen and now we're going to talk about the parameters. Changing the parameters, see what the parameters are and how to get into them. The Honeywell idea of getting into parameters is just simply pressing all three buttons at the same time. When you press all three buttons at the same time, where the third spot is on this display, you're going to hold the buttons until you get an underscore in that location. Now you see the underscore uh, for temporarily that was on there, and that tells us that we're in and we can actually view the parameters, we can change the parameters. So I actually changed, I mean, let me go around to the beginning. The first one we look at is high limit. Uh, again, if we want to change the high limit, we can change it uh, up or down. It is defaulted to 180. If we make a change, as soon as we hit the I button, it saves it automatically. The next one's a differential. We have a 15 degree differential uh, on this control. Uh, that can be changed up or down. If I see the boiler short cycling, and you can determine that by going back to the uh, earlier session that we did. Um, we may want to extend that to about 20 degrees possibly if the boiler is short cycling. If we hit it again, we have OR. OR means pump overrun. This would be a pump post purge. You, you created the heat in the boiler, thermostat satisfied. Uh, we can keep the, the circulator running a little bit longer to take that heat that you created and put it out in the house. This helps to save fuel. You just have to be a little cautious with this setting. Uh, if you have zone valves, you would not want to use post purge because if you continue to run a circulator when the zone valves are closed, that means you'll eventually burn up the circulator and you have to be replacing it. If you have your circulators wired to a multi zone relay, and there's no circulators wired to the boiler, of course you wouldn't want to run this because it wouldn't do anything for you. If you do run it, you can actually put time period in there and it would run for that many minutes after the boiler shuts down. <clears throat> the only time that I really would consider using this is if I had one heat zone for the whole house. So it's just one circulator, one thermostat, uh, usually larger systems like cast iron systems with more water volume as opposed to copper tube baseboard that just might be a better way of doing it. The next one we have is pre-purge. Pre-purge is a setting where the pump comes on first and we use residual heat first. Now this is a nicer feature because of the fact that the we're using the, the heat in the boiler before we fire the boiler. Now, if the boiler has more than 140 degrees water temperature in the boiler and we get a call for heat, we do not fire the boiler. Uh, this is a new code that came about September 1st of 2012. Uh, we have to use residual heat first, use the, turn the pump on, let it run, and drop the water temperature below 140 and fire the boiler. If the boiler is less than 140, it can fire up as soon as we check the water temperature and make sure it's not above 140. This feature we could change the time is defaulted to two minutes. I would run this up probably to about 10 minutes or even higher. My reasoning here is I don't ever want the boiler to fire on, um, on time. In other words, it's going to cool off. Uh, if we set it for two minutes like it is out of the box, and the boiler's up, at, let's say at 170, and it's a small zone, and the boiler's running, <clears throat> and um, in two minutes we don't get down below 140 to allow the boiler to fire on temperature, it would then fire on time. If I'm trying to save as much fuel as I can and keep the boiler as efficient as possible, I'm going to want this boiler only to fire if the temperature drops low enough. So I'm going to put more minutes in that post-purge, or I'm sorry, pre-purge, to try and keep the boiler um, off as long as I can and just bring it on temperature only. 
The next one is a start temperature. We can change the start temperature. I said it has to get below 140. We can raise that uh, depending on your application. If you have kick space heaters or duct coils or something like that in your heating system, you may want to change that. But bear in mind, there's not much water volume in these boilers, so it normally wouldn't take very long to drop the temperature. And the higher you make that, the more fuel you're going to use. The next one is priority time. It's either on or off. If we hook domestic hot water to this, uh, then we would want priority time on. So that whenever the indirect water heater calls for hot water, that the boiler heating uh, circulator shuts down and then when the hot water satisfies the heat comes back on. <clears throat> if you make this second zone instead of domestic hot water if you make it heat it ignores priority. Domestic hot water we can change that to domestic hot water or TT2. TT2 is your second zone of heat. Uh, as I said previously this control can do two inputs. It can be two heat zones, one heat zone, one domestic hot water, and we can change domestic hot water TT2, and then that makes it a heat zone. Again, it ignores priority. If we leave it in DH, then it would not, uh, it would not ignore priority, and it would shut down the heating pump. And if you get into a lockout situation, here's reset. Uh, you would just go ahead and hit one of the arrow keys if it was locked out. And Fahrenheit or Celsius. Back means leave the parameter mode. You'd have to hit one of the arrow keys to get back out of that. You're back at status one.